south of Corridon, Indiana, just off rural Interstate 135, is Squire Boone Caverns, one of the most beautiful and historic show caves in Indiana. It's a very special place, combining an awe-inspiring cavern, a grist mill, and a rustic village, transporting visitors back in time to the early 1800s. A time before Indiana was even a state, and the landscape was wild and untamed. And a man named Squire Boone and his older brother Daniel came to explore this remarkable area. Come along for an adventure among the rolling hills of southern Indiana for a different and unexpected experience, one that you'll never forget. It was somewhere around 1790 that Squire and Daniel Boone crossed the Ohio River from Kentucky to explore the wilderness of what would someday be Mockport, Indiana. However, the Shawnee Indians considered all of this land their hunting grounds and would execute anyone that dared trespass. They were one of the most feared tribes and for good reason. They fought to the death and seldom took prisoners alive. If you surrendered to the Shawnee, they would tie you to a post and set you on fire, burning you alive for cowardice. So when Squire and his brother Daniel were spotted by Shawnee warriors, they immediately ran for their lives. The Shawnee were no one to trifle with. When all seemed hopeless, Squire found a small cave that was so well camouflaged that he almost missed it. He and Daniel jumped inside and waited. As if by a miracle, the Shawnee warriors walked right past the cave like it wasn't even there. From that moment, Squire considered the cave holy ground, as God had saved both of them from certain death. Around 1804, Squire brought his wife Jane daughter Sarah, and sons Moses, Isaiah, Jonathan, and Enoch to this area. For the rest of his life, Squire lived next to his holy cave. It was the longest he'd lived anywhere in his entire life, 11 years. He helped build the Old Goshen Church in 1807 the very first Baptist church building in Indiana. Squire Boone was an ordained Baptist minister and very reverent in his faith. He set up a grist mill and went to work on making this place his home. He called it the Traveler's Rest and was accommodating to all visitors. He made his own rifles as he was a trained gunsmith, spending five years as an apprentice. He was also a captain 
during the Revolutionary War and was an excellent shot, a skill he used in hunting on the frontier and defending his family against the Shawnee. He helped to establish Corridan, the Indiana Territory capital, and later, the state capital. He was even the Harrison County Justice of the Peace in 1808. Squire wasn't a stranger to the law and served in the Virginia legislature for two terms in 1789 and 1790. But in 1815, he realized he was dying from congestive heart failure. He made himself a coffin made of walnut from trees that surrounded his beloved holy cave. He often came to the cave to pray, give thanks for his life, and meditate, seeking God's presence. He carved into the limestone, My God, my life hath much befriended. I'll praise him till my days are ended. Squire Boone died on August 5, 1815, at 70 years old. And as he requested, his sons buried him inside his holy cave. Behind the village is a trail that leads to the original cave opening. This is where Squire and Daniel hid from the Shawnees and where Squire was later buried. There's a stone marker identifying the burial cave. Squire Boone's four sons placed his walnut coffin in the cave. They then placed a boulder at the opening and sealed it. There's a legend that his youngest son, Enoch, visited the grave many years later, and having found that animals had gotten into the grave and the coffin had rotted away, took his father's bones to Kentucky and reburied Squire next to his wife Jane. However, over 150 years later, in 1973, Squire Boone Cavern employees excavated the cave opening and found bones that were very telling. When Squire lived in Kentucky, he had been shot and maimed several times during Indian attacks. The damage to his shoulder and arm were so extensive that one arm was an inch and a half shorter than the other. The bones found at the cave were consistent with the injuries that Squire had experienced. This was Squire Boone. Animals or relic hunters may have removed parts of the coffin and some bones, but it's also possible that Enoch took some of them back to Kentucky. A new coffin was built, a new headstone was chiseled, and a new shroud for Squire Boone was cut and sewn by one of his descendants. In fact, many of his blood relatives live in and around Harrison County to this day. And now, Squire Boone rests much deeper inside the cave. The Squire Boone village recreates what it was like in the early 1800s. During the summer, you can get a bite to eat at Boone's Kitchen. See soap made the old fashioned way and candles are created like they were in pioneer times. There's a pond where you can feed ducks 
and take in the peaceful countryside. At the mining shack, you can sift a bag of dirt through a watery sluice and find many treasures that you can take home. And if you're feeling very adventurous, there's even a zip line. Kids of all ages love Squire's Barnyard, which is a petting zoo. Here you can feed goats or a pot-bellied pig. But the focal point is the old visitor center cabin where you can sign up for a cave tour. Inside are many souvenirs to be had. Everything from t-shirts and mugs to old-fashioned candy, handmade toys, and even imitation coonskin hats. And here's a fun fact. The pioneer-style gifts that you see at the visitor center are created just up the road at New Albany. The items are so popular that they require a full manufacturing facility. They are sold internationally and to theme parks. And if you visit Walt Disney's Frontierland, many Squire Boone items can be seen and bought there as well. But it all started with a cave. Cave tours start just outside the visitor center, in front of the old wagon. Visitors take a short walk through the woods to the new entry, as the story of Squire Boone is told every day. Through this door is a place of unbelievable beauty, a complete departure from the outside world. Prepare to be completely amazed. As you walk above bridges in the cave, you can hear the sound of rushing water below you. This is a cave that's very much alive. With water carving and enhancing the interior. As it has for eons. You'll also notice that every rail that you touch feels like a rough stone. Moisture from the cave mixes with the limestone, making calcium carbonate. It dissolves and deposits the limestone on all surfaces. It also creates delicate stalactites hanging tight from the ceiling. It also creates much larger and more amazing formations.
Squire Boone Caverns has one of the largest rimstone dams in the entire world. Depending on estimates, it is either second or third largest on the planet. The deeper you go inside the cave, the formations only get better and better. This is the largest formation in the cave, known as the Rock of Ages. If you look at it just right, it looks a little like an elephant. And finally, visitors come face to face with the grave of Squire Boone. Revolutionary War Captain, Gunsmith, Miller, Explorer, Minister, Statesman, and a man that loved God more than life itself. The man that called this cave holy and wanted to be buried inside it for eternity. The cave is certainly more beautiful than any chapel or mausoleum made by human hands. As the tour concludes, the enormity and grandeur of what you've seen is a lot to process. A spiral staircase of 73 stairs is the only barrier to leaving this exotic, subterranean paradise. It will leave many people breathless. Or is it just a response to the beauty and mystery of Squire Boone Caverns?